Hello, thanks all for coming. Um, thanks for, to The Strand for hosting us. This is great. Um, I see some of you guys have already been flipping through the book. What do you guys think? <laughs> Thank you. Any of you guys uh, picked up last year's edition, our, our first art book, The Art of Betty and Veronica? Very cool. This is the same team that's behind that book. It's our second deluxe hardcover uh, art book edition. Um, Craig and Victor, tell us a little bit about this latest art book and what your approach was and maybe how you approached it differently than last year's The Art of Betty and Veronica. All right, well, last year I had the pleasure of working with Craig Yo for the first time on The Art of Betty and Veronica. This year, Craig had the pleasure of working with you. <laughs> <laughs> the pleasure was all his. <laughs> yeah. And um, how we approached it was is to uh, try to give the reader a picture of Archie's history through the covers in this book. And one thing about the uh, book that's really great is the fact that a, a, there's a large section in there of covers that were actually requested by our readers. We had put something up on the website asking them to uh, send in their recommendations for covers that they'd like to see in the book. And uh, there were covers there all the way from the 40s right up to the present day. And one thing, Archie Comet, Archie first appeared in the issue of Pep, number 22 in 1941. And he, his picture wasn't on the cover. And it wasn't on the cover for any of the books that year except for one book called Jackpot. And in 1942, the first issue came out. And Archie was, took off. Okay, very popular. And that first cover is in there. Did we put the cover? We put the pep in there too, didn't we? No, we didn't. No, I, I, we should buy the book and <laughs> <laughs> find out. That's a good question. I think so. <laughs> if it's not Fernando or, or Dan can draw it in your book, so <laughs> sure, it's sure, sure. no problem. <laughs> Uh, so let me open this up for all of our panelists. Um, what exactly goes into the creation of a cover from concept to the printers? Well, we, you have to come up with an idea. And um, that's also in the book. You know, the, uh, we had one writer by the name of George Bladder mm -hmm. who had supplied most of the covers for, I don't know, 40 years maybe. <laughs> he was sending in cover ideas. And... Um, the covers are just not one person. We all we do it in in a group. We look at the covers, we decide what we want to use, and then it goes through the different stages. I don't think it's any great surprise when you start to familiarize yourself with the uh, the Archie covers that that there's a, actually a writer that it, it has the germ of the idea because the the covers have content. Unlike a lot of superhero covers where it's just two guys bashing it out. Uh, you know, there's actual content to the to the covers. There's a humor. There's a gag. There's actually kind of, in some sense, a little story behind it. And that's why I love the Archie covers. You know, there's there's a lot lot in them, lot behind them, and they're 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 closer uh, to actually a, maybe a New Yorker cartoon than a, than a traditional comic book cover uh, because they, they actually say something. In the New Yorker cartoons, many of them were were written by writers and and then the artists like Charles Adams. Uh, uh, would draw up the ideas, but it, it, e, like the famous writer E.B. White did, did a lot of uh, cartoon ideas uh, for the New Yorker cartoonists. So George Gladier uh, uh, was kind of the E.B. White of uh, the, the Archie world, co coming up with the cover ideas, and he kind of had rudimentary drawing skills himself. He would kind of sketch out the cover. We have one of his quick old sketches uh, in the book to show uh, what how the idea started. Uh, with his thoughts and then how uh, uh, you know a, a maybe more skilled draftsman uh, would give it all the polish and finesse that, that we and and, and uh, often sexiness so that, that we know and love of the Archie covers. So uh, Bob Montana for those of you who don't know he was the original Archie artist and uh, if we go to the next slide here. 
Oh, you know what? Let's talk about the cover process. <laughs> um, this is a slide that uh, you guys were talking about when I was asking you the yeah. other day, like how it goes from start to finish. Um, what, what do you want to tell us about well, this Well, first process? you have the script. Is that up? I can't see it from here. This one doesn't have. This is the Beatles uh, cover All right. in, in the four colors. Well, the artist is given this little piece, this little rough of the cover. By, and by the writer. From the editor. From the editor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The editor, the, the star. <laughs> then the artist draws the cover in pencil. Then he shows it to the editor. And the editor says, fix this, fix that. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> then the cover is inked and finished. You have fin now, you can see that Beatles cover is black and white. It's all set. But it still needs so, to so be... So the artist is drawn in pencil and ink, right? Yep. Right. Now it's ready to be put together with the logo that was going on a laugh cover. And it's all put together and colored. And those... That's the four color process of when it's printed. Those are actually, uh, on the right hand side, those are uh, our printer's proofs so that the printer would give back uh, to the editor after... Uh, after the color separation. After the color separations are made. The, the printer would give them back to the editor to, to go over to make sure there's no glitches or, or uh, little uh, spots that need to be fixed up. There's only one thing. They don't do that anymore. <laughs> That's old, old school. school. That's old, old school. school. <laughs> now everything is done digitally. And we see all the covers. We, we just send the covers, the digital files, directly to the printer. In fact, the artist doesn't even send me to you the artwork. They just uh, scan it, yes, gentlemen? In some, no, cases. Still, so some it, cases. It depends. If, if I'm doing a cover from be beginning to finish, I'll just send the digital file. Right, but, right. Mm -hmm. hmm. But then we, just, we still bring the pencils in sometimes, and, and it off, goes off to an ink or two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we go to our next panel, you can see cover in its final stage when all those different layers are combined and let's go to the next slide here and this is a uh, cover for Archie number one you can see it from its first phase here to where it's co actually colored and on your comic shop shelves Archie number one is on the comic shop shelf still? <laughs> At one point it <laughs> was, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> if it was today, then that would be a very lucky customer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, and moving on to, and back to Montana. He was the original Archie artist. Just kind of defined the looks of these characters. Um, and I believe he is Victor and Craig's favorite cover artist. We were just talking about that the no, other night. No, 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 no. Uh, Dan and Fernando were. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Oh, that's oh, that's oh my mistake. Thanks. Well, <laughs> of now the we artists who are no longer living, he is their ah, favorite. There we go. How are you guys feeling anyway? <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, so tell us a little bit about how Montana's style evolved and influenced uh, Archie's future artists, such as these guys. Well, I, his first, like the first door you see in Pep Number Twenty Two, if you if you just bought it at the comic shop uh, down the street, uh, is uh, actually very crude. The artwork is yeah. kind of really kind of rough. You have to understand, they were very young artists when they were just out of art school, and uh, they, were just, they, they, they really had a lot. Job. They were it was learn as you go, they, and they were drawing hundreds of pages every month, and it was. But they, as they drew, they got better and better. What's and phenomenal about Montana, I think he got better fast. Yeah. He went from like those kind of crude drawings you see in that, that those first few issues to, to this polished, beautiful style. And mm. Yeah, and that was the really style that on. any new artist that would come into the company were told to try to follow his style. I think that's what I told oh, yeah. you with, with Dan DiCarlo. Mm -hmm. Dan DiCarlo, yeah. 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 And to try and, you know, not, not copy it. You know, each artist, their artwork is like a signature. Even though Archie looks the same in the books, when you, if you really know what you're looking at, you'll know which artist did what. Oh, yeah, and, and no one knows better than Victor. When we were doing the book, we, you know, we had all these hundreds of covers, and, and, and we wanted to give the artists credit and identify them for each cover. And so uh, 
I, I'm fair about with with it, but you know, when I got stumped, I went to Victor and he said, "Oh, that's uh, Bill Vagoda or that's uh, Harry Lucy." He, he, you know, he he recognizes it like you might recognize your own children. He recognizes the different art styles, and it, so it was really great, to, you know, having. Uh, uh, his experience and his expertise uh, behind the book. This guy's worked for Archie for 55 years. That's really in, in, incredible. Thank you. Thank you. The thing is, in those days, lots of, lots of times the artist would work. The penciler might ink somebody else's cover that was penciled. So their influence on the artwork would be would change it. It would be hard to decide who actually drew the cover. Mm. You came across that lots of times, especially with Joe Edwards and Yeah, there was uh, actually maybe other one or two covers that we ultimately were kind of uh, bamboozled by, and, and we just put artist artist unknown. <laughs> I, right. I think he was the brother of the unknown soldier, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so moving on to our next cover artist that's featured in the book, uh, Harry Lucy. Um, he's actually the cover artist of the Art of Archie covers. Uh, you guys can check out for yourselves right there. And what do you guys think about Harry Lucy's style? What set him apart from artists that came before him? Well, first of all, he was, he was an adventure artist to start with. He, he used to draw... Uh, before Archie Comics was Archie Comics, it was MLJ Comics back in the late 30s and early 40s. And uh, they were doing a lot of superhero books, and he used to draw The Hangman. That was what he, and then he drew that whole series of uh, Sam Hill, which, and he wrote as well. And that was sort of like a private eye detective series. Yeah, The Hangman was like really gritty, and kind of probably the first really gritty anti-hero of, of comics and Sam Hill was like this hard-boiled detective and it's it's interesting that Lucy could do this realism but at the same time it brought this wonderful humor and slapstick and and exaggerated sexiness to, to his drawings he, he was a man of many talents and I he, love Lucy <laughs> yeah he also used to do a lot of our ads all of our house ads for Betty and Veronica Summer Fun, for the Archie Annual. And um, one, of the, one of our advertisers used to be Bendix Brakes. <laughs> for, you know, and... Uh, oh, for the bicycles. For the bicycles, yeah. And he used to draw those, uh, those uh, ads for the books. He used to, this is a, this is a secret, uh, but uh, I'm gonna reveal it, because I'm not an official Archie employee, not even for one year much less 55 but he would o often draw uh, uh, his his work the, the characters he would af uh, sans uh, clothing and uh, leave it up to the and maybe maybe he would do a sketch or the first panel w w with the outfits that people would be wearing but the rest of it was kind of drawn you know with just kind of the anatomy there and and then he left it up to the inkers to actually add all the costuming and stuff. I think he did that more for fun <laughs> than, than anything else, but uh, it was an interesting way to work. Well, he got in trouble a few times. <laughs> Dan Parent draws in the nude, but he doesn't draw. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, was that a secret, too? <laughs> well, it was. <laughs> So Dan DiCarlo here, he was a huge influence on the look of Archie. He actually set the standard for what became the Archie house style. Um, Dan and Fernando, I know you guys are qu quite a bit influenced by his style. What can you tell us about DiCarlo and how he influenced you? Well, he was the, the you know, growing up reading Archie, he was the artist he always saw on the covers. He did like 90% of the covers, so he, he was easy to recognize. And he was easy to recognize for how, how well he drew Betty and Veronica. So he was able to draw um, the Archie girls with that sex appeal, but yet it was still wholesome enough for kids to read too, which is kind of like a fine line. And um, but he just, you know, see, he just was the artist growing up, you know, that you looked at and you wanted to, to draw like. And then when I when I started working at Archie, I was lucky enough to work with him and learn a lot from him. And he was an artist that kept getting better all the time. Isn't mm. Every year, you know, he would bring in something one week and you say, gee, this is, the, this is great. It's tremendous. Then the following week, you bring in something and it's even better. He just kept getting better and better. Mm -hmm. And this is what he was, you know, really established. He was older. Even older than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was certainly brilliant. I yeah. mean, uh, 
I, I once visited him at his home studio and he he, uh, he kindly gave me a, a Bob Montana, I was admiring a Bob Montana original he had on his bulletin board and he, he gave it to me, but he, he was telling me how much he was influenced by Montana, so it's interesting to me, Dan became the kind of guy to read and to to get inspiration from if you're doing artwork, but he he before him, you know, there was Bob Montana influencing him and he was following his style and now these guys are standing on those guys shoulders and you know doing great artwork for for a, a, a new generation it's it's great to see this whole archie history which is uh soon to uh <coughs> celebrate 75 years of archie uh history uh just great to see this whole kind of continuum of of great artwork and stories and, and covers fernando anything to add well, he was, um, Dan was a very kind and generous guy with his time, and one of the greatest experiences for me uh, when I first started, um, every week I go and visit the Archie offices, and I'll actually sit up there and work, um, and Dan would come in once a week too, and it was a real great experience. Victor would ask Dan to sit down with me and go over my pages when I was starting out, and Dan would show me like how to get those likenesses just right so that you know Archie looks like Archie and Jughead looks like Jughead, and little things he did to make Jughead's hat sit right on his head, and I mean that was incredibly invaluable, and I know. Dan worked even closer with uh, with with the other Dan. Yes, the great Dan. The great <laughs> Dan. The other great Dan. No. Are you the not so great? <laughs> oh, I, I, no, I, 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 not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. So we're really lucky to have two of Archie's greatest artists here with us tonight, whose work appears in practically every comic we put out each month. Um, Dan, in addition to uh, the various series that he works on, he's also the creator of one of our latest and greatest characters to date, Kevin Keller. Um, Dan, can you tell us how you got your start at Archie? Yes. Um well, I, I went to the, the Joe Kubert School in uh, Dover, New Jersey, as many uh, comic book artists go. Fernando went there too, he teaches there now. I've taught there before. Um, and uh, when I was there in my third year, uh, Archie, Victor, was looking for artists. And um, I showed Art Victor some pages, and then he couldn't get rid of me ever since. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then I started working on production up in the Archie offices and doing freelance at night. And um, after working in production for like 10 years, I started to just go totally freelance and have been, you know, lucky to be very, very busy and um, still doing it and loving it. So. And Fernando here is teaching the next generation of artists at the Joe Kubert School currently, and his work can be seen in the pages of Life with Archie, as well as doing covers for practically every digest we put out. Uh, Fernando, tell us a little bit about how you ended up at Archie. Uh, it was very similar. Uh, I was, as Dan said, I went to the Joe Kubert School as well. Um, one of the great things about the school is they invite all the different comic book companies to review the graduating students' portfolio. Uh, so when I was in my final year, Victor came out to the school, uh, and he came out with Dan DiCarlo, in fact, and they both went over my portfolio, and Victor very generously took pity on me <laughs> and said that I was ready for a story. So a week after I graduated, I, I visited the Archie offices for the first time, and uh, Victor gave me my, my first script, which was for Archie's Pals and Gals Double Digest number eight. Wow, and that was uh, that was 19 years ago. So I've been I've been very fortunate that uh, he's took pity on me ever since. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to hand it in. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. It's, it's going to be really good. It's going to be good. <laughs> Uh, so I'm curious to know, I'm sure everybody else is too down the row here, who is your favorite Archie cover artist? Living or dead? Hmm. Well, I, I'd have to say Dan DiCarlo, and like, but Harry Lucy is very close. You know, I, I think it's like between the two, but I, I'd edge, I'd say Dan, Dan DiCarlo. Um, it, it's the same between the two, and I also have to mention uh, another guy who often doesn't get mentioned. That's Sam Schwartz. Oh, Sam Schwartz, who, yeah. who did a uh, uh, Jug prob Jughead, probably put you know the 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 artist best associated with Jughead, and I really I really liked his work a lot. I 
me it was Bob Montana first. And then, in fact, Bob Montana, when he came up to the office one time, thought that Dan DiCarlo was the closest to his, to his artwork. I wonder why. <laughs> I only met Bob Montana twice in all the years. Mm, really? Yeah. Well, he lived all the way up in, you know, never invited me up there. <laughs> New Hampshire, right? Was it yeah. New Hampshire? Yeah, yeah something. Yeah. yeah, New Hampshire. <laughs> but uh, he was, he was a and Bob Montana actually w started, you know, after the, at one point, stopped drawing for the books, just some covers here and there. But he did the newspaper strip. And um, when he was, he would go away for about six months, he'd go over to Spain or to England, and uh, Harry Lucy would ghost the strip for him. And sometimes Joe Edwards, too. A lot of people didn't know that. That's that was top secret. It was classified <laughs> information, actually. So uh, I could talk about it now. There. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to say my favorite RT artist is uh, Pablo Picasso. Uh, he did a number of uh, Madhouse uh, covers in the early uh, 1960s that were just like just like some stuff like you'd never seen before, and just very very different and. Uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, he, he'd have to be my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I might be wrong on that point, though. Victor might say no, no. that was really Bill Vigoda. <laughs> Bill Vigoda was a great artist. Bill Vigoda was a, a great very artist. Very talented, very versatile artist. And he was, he's the brother of Abe Vigoda. Oh, the guy that played uh, on the, the fish. Uh, yeah, he was fish. In, Fish. He, he was in the uh, Godfather, and there's a picture of him and the, the two of the, the brothers in the book. <coughs> really, that's right. The yep. one with the big ears is the one that looks like <laughs> Alfred E. Newman, actually. <laughs> was that that was Abe? We were really thrilled to find these uh, vintage photographs of of the early Ar Archie artists through the <laughs> kindness of a collector, and uh, you know, some some of these people I, I I never had a clue what they might might have looked like, and it was really. We're great to see these, and uh, Archie it, it really uh, gives a lot of credit to their artists and likes to talk about their history and uh, uh, sh shows them off. and uh, And uh, much of that is because of the uh, of the uh, under the guidance of the uh, publisher of uh, Archie, who ha happens to be in the back row. John, can you wave to the fans here? <laughs> I've uh, I, I've kind of watched art as a comics historian and fan. I watched the Archie Company for for many decades, and uh, I've really seen an incredible uh, uh, drive and enthusiasm and excitement and and hotbed of creativity now that uh, John has taken the, the realms uh, as of a few years ago. And uh, you know, I think I think we we, we all as as Archie fans uh, ha have seen it too. And uh, I, th I think I, I, the one thing I keep hearing whenever, where I, wherever I, whenever I do have the pleasure of going to the, over the office is that, yeah, we've done these great things, but let's not rest on our laurels. Let's keep coming up with more ideas and better ideas and and more exciting things. And uh, you know, so I, I think uh, it's fun to work on these Archie history books. And I, no one loves comics history more than me and Archie history. But uh, you know, I, I think maybe the best is yet to come. That's just me. <laughs> And speaking of which, uh, I know I mentioned that this was our second hardcover art book, and I know a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into this over the past year, but you guys are hard at work on the next edition. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, the third book, it should, it should be ready this time next year. It'll be pinups. Book of pinups. In the 60s, Dan DiCarlo, uh, did he come up with the ideas? Yes, start, he, start started, he started drawing the pinups. Started drawing. I think. I think. Late it was, I think it was uh, two motivations. Like he was excited about it. And he was also a little lazy because <laughs> when you draw a pinup, you only have to draw one one drawing per page, yeah. as opposed to six or eight. Well, it's one big panels. panel. Yeah. Uh, but it was a f great fun idea. So, like, especially in the early '60s, he did, did all these different pinups of Betty and Veronica naturally, and then all, everyone from uh, Mr. Weatherly. Whether be to Miss Grundy, so if, if you've been looking, don't forget Miss Beasley. I mean Miss Beasley. So if you've been anxious to have pictures of uh, Miss Beasley, Beasley or Miss Grundy uh, 
on, on, on your wall. On your wall, uh, <laughs> this will be a, a great opportunity. <clears throat> I'm more partial to Betty and Veronica myself, but uh, so, so it's going to be a, it's going to be a fun book again. Uh, they weren't just like pinups like uh, the GIs put up on, uh, over their bunks in, in during World War II. W w just a pretty picture. They, 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 these, these do have content to them. They have gags and great, the great Archie humor is, is a hallmark of, of these pinups too. In addition to be, you know, pretty sexy and fun. Uh, you know, Dan DiCarlo, Dan DiCarlo during the war used to do some nose art. That was for the planes on the. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I wonder if we could get a photo of those for that book. I once got him a calendar for Christmas of old planes with nose art. Ah, nice. So uh, the pinups going to be fun. That was his first pinups. Hmm. Right. <laughs> Actually. And and then on, after that, on we're gonna we're, we started discussing the 75th anniversary book we're gonna put together, and ooh, it, it's a couple of years off, but we're already late. Because <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work, and we're going to put we're together under the gun. We're yeah. going to put together an incredible yeah. book. No vacation. Yeah. <laughs> so what's really cool about the book you guys hold in your hands is we had some fan participation when it came to the creation of this thing. Uh, we put out to the fans on the Archie Fan Forum website. I don't know if you guys ever frequent that. Just asking them to sound sound off on their favorite covers in Archie's 70 plus year history and so if any of you guys were lucky enough to answer the call and then your contribution may be featured in this book uh, you guys want it's actually the biggest section in the book right Archie really cares about their fans and they had great suggestions so it was a natural to have that be the, the largest uh, section so in addition to our oh I just have a question I haven't asked any of these guys you guys have one specific cover that's your favorite. Out of all the covers, is there any one cover that you just love more than any other cover? That's a good question. <laughs> well, I, I always go back to one cover that Dan DiCarlo did in the early '80s, and it was like a it was a Betty and Me cover, or Betty's doing like a flash dance. Oh yeah, that's and, good. and I don't know that was like that was it for me. That's and it's just, it's just so beautifully drawn. I don't is it in, I don't even know if it's in the book, but it's, it's in it's, another book. It's been shown before, and it's just just the art. It's just beautiful. It's um, Dan DiCarlo at his best. So uh, a cover that I, I I've been looking at it a lot lately, just because I, I have the book close to me at home, and it's it's on the cover of the of one of the Art of Harry Lucy volumes, and it's a very simple cover. It's just Archie holding a coat, and Betty and Veronica are each putting an arm into a different sleeve, mm. and it's it's a beautiful cover because it's it's so simple, but those three figures just carry the whole Archie, the, the whole Archie premise is right in that, and, and Archie's looking all confused, like he doesn't know what what he's going to do, and they meet each other in that coat um, but it, it's it's a it's a real great cover and no words it doesn't need any words I think some of the best covers are, are that work that way speaking of a cover uh, that embodies the whole Archie story is it, it's there is a famous cover that we certainly do feature in the book in a number of ways it's that the in-house they call it three on a soda and that's uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Archie surrounded by Betty and Veronica at the, at the pop soda shop and they're all drinking out of uh, one soda with three straws and it's uh, it just a, it's a, just such a great cover and again it's not like this funny crazy gag or something like that it, there's just but there's just something endearing about it and engaging and it does talk about the the love triangle just so succinctly there and uh, uh, Jughead's in the back kind of making a, a wry comment so uh, but but the the, the three uh, main characters are featured there, and that, and, and, and that cover has been done uh, variations on it many times, and uh, I know I know Dan has done one. Have you done mm -hmm. any variations on that, Fernando? Get to work, Fernando. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> and uh, in fact, I was over at the Archie offices the other day working on the pinup book, and and, and, and I saw some new issues uh, uh, down in the warehouse that were about to be sent out uh, that had some variations on it. And, and, this, and the, the image that Dan DiCarlo did of it, it was originally done by Bob Montana, but the version that DiCarlo did uh, even appeared on a U.S. postage stamp, and that's how known and loved uh, the Archie characters are, and, that, and that's how that much that singular uh, scenario 
uh, that drawing embodies the whole Archie mystique, I think. So that's a great cover mm -hmm. by anybody's standards. My favorite cover was the first cover. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. First cover. Told the story. Told you what you were going to get. Nobody read Archie before. Nobody knew who Archie was. You look at that first cover, and you'll know what it's all about. The two girls and Jughead and Archie jump, trying to show off. <laughs> that, that was a great that cover. Was, that was my mm. favorite cover. Mm. It's been downhill ever since for 55 years. <laughs> <laughs> Good answers. My favorite cover is actually yet to come if we continue on. Uh, in addition to our regular Archie stable of artists, that's not the cover. That's a mm -hmm. Dell comic. <laughs> <laughs> and we're experiencing some technical difficulties. Um, as I was saying, um, we have these variant covers. I don't know if you guys are familiar if you pick up your Archie comics in the shop, but in addition to just our regular Archie stable of artists, we've reached out to artists throughout the entire comics industry just to put their own spin on Archie. And we've come up with some really cool covers over the this past like couple of years when we started doing this. So some of these artists might not be familiar to you, but hopefully they will be soon through uh, through these different variant covers that we've been producing. Uh, what do you guys think about the var variant covers we've been putting out with these different artists and that's I, not in the Archie style? I think they're great. I think they're great. I particularly like the mermaid one. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Fiona Staples. Yeah. 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 She's a great artist. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you have the, the one where they're all sitting in that, uh, that t t the spread, front and back cover. Um, you know, they're sitting in the diner. Oh, I, th I believe we do have that one. Might be the one after this. No. Is that the one where he's in the car? Mm. Is, the is car. it the Nighthawks one? Oh, 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 Nighthawks one? The, Je the Jeff Schultz one? That was a good one too, where he does the, the Rockwell. Rock oh, oh, you're Take talking about the, the diner, oh, the Nighthawks one. The one which is that, yeah, that's a good, that's great too. Yeah. Oh yeah, if you go back one. There you um, go. Get that one yeah, there. that's actually my favorite one. Based off, I I always loved Norman Rockwell growing up, so I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. But he's one of our regular artists that did that. Mm -hmm. And if we go back one more frame. Um, this guy, Walt Simonson, he's best known for Thor. So we did a Thor spoof recently, which if you guys are planning on seeing the Thor movie over this weekend, and you want to see the Archie spin on that through the Archie lens, which I highly recommend. Um, yeah, we did our own specific take on it, so we got you covered there. And, and Fernando, he actually did the regular cover on that and the interiors as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what was uh, it like tackling Thor through Archie? Oh, that, w that was a lot of fun. Um, because I always like, yeah, I, I've gotten to draw a lot of the, the adventure stuff of Archie, uh, Man from Riverdale stories. Um, the Life with Archie magazine has a little bit of, a, of an adventurous uh, bent to it. So um, it's Archie outside of the high school, so it's it lets me draw something different. So I got to draw like frost giants and dwarves and gods and things like that. So it was a lot of fun. So just your typical Archie issue. Your typical Archie issue. <laughs> um, I'd love to open up uh, the floor for questions. I hope you guys brought some. Yes, sir, in the back. Uh, this is really for Fernando and Dan. Flipping through the book, you, you come away, obviously, with the feeling that throughout the decades, Archie, particularly Betty and Veronica, have, you know, they've been totally on point as it relates to contemporary fashion. <laughs> they re they're reflective of their time. Mm -hmm. um, I think more so than maybe in any other female characters, fashion clothing styles are so important to those characters. As, as artists, what do you guys do to stay on trend with contemporary fashion? Is it, is it, it Accessible is high fashion. How do you stay up with what's uh, appropriate? 
Seventeen magazine, all the teen magazines, and, and you might look kind of odd getting all these teen <laughs> magazines like coming to your house with your name on them, but you just deal with that. Um, uh, and a lot of now online too, it's actually easy. Sometimes you're you're looking for like like a like some kind of blouse or shirt, and now you can just go online and find it at a, you know, on an online store. Then that's that's really convenient. And just um, a lot of times when you're watching uh, TV, and you see like a show where there's a good fashion, you just you know freeze frame it. Which is the great thing about DVR is you just freeze frame it and hold on to it and use it. Yeah, that, that's the main thing is just keeping an eye out for, and it's it's not just like what looks good now. It's what will also look good in a, in a drawing. So sometimes mm -hmm. a fashion, you know, it looks very modern and contemporary, but there may be like a like an impossible uh, pattern on it. Yeah. Uh, so we have to change it a little. So it's it's keeping your eye out, looking at a lot of Seventeen magazine. A lot of times, since I go up into the office, they'll have some of the girls in the office will have stuff for me that they'll say here this would look good on Betty or this will look good on Veronica that's another thing to keep uh, in mind is the differences between the girls they don't all dress identically yeah. Veronica I look at a lot of Kim Kardashian for Veronica mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, you know a lot of uh, contemporary but simpler clothes for Betty yeah. uh, Carlo actually used to go to a you know, before you could Google things on the internet, he used to go to uh, 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 high schools early in the morning when the kids were going into the school, and he went from across the street, he would take pictures. <laughs> uh, today, oh boy. you know, Dan had the most wholesome of, of uh, intentions and methods, but today it would probably be greatly frowned on. In fact, uh, Dan Parent is not allowed within five feet of any school in New Jersey. Well, Pennsylvania's okay. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, another question? What's your favorite Archie character? Mm. Favorite Archie character? Mine is Jughead. He's always been my favorite character. Hmm. And in fan polls, he, he's, he always rates the highest. Yeah. He's such a rebel and proto-punk, and he's got, he, he kind of distanced himself from the rest of the gang. He's cool. Reggie. Oh, sorry, you're a Reggie fan. <laughs> He's the bad guy. <laughs> or as close as we get. I'd say I, Veronica, I mean, it's like a tie almost. Like Jughead, I have to, I can't, not, Jughead's great. They're all good. Veronica is my favorite female character. And then like Kevin, of course, has got a special place with me because I oh, work on it so closely. And so I, I'm going to say those three characters. So that I don't get beat up, I'm going to say Moose. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Good call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, I have a, a, a question about the fashions as well, but more about the drawing page. When I was a little girl, I would draw. You, you would have like a little section like draw Betty and Veronica or like a pinup page with like their style. And I drew their clothes always. And it's so funny, that was how I really figured out that I wanted to be a designer. Mm -hmm. And I've been in design for like four years now, and I love it, and I'm so happy. Wow. And I just can't mm -hmm. thank you enough, because I never would have known that that was something that I needed to do. Like, that was what would make me happy if I hadn't been reading Archie and drawing your little I can draw mm -hmm. pages it's very for nice. all years. That was my first, my first, like, I don't know, venture to fashion design. So what makes you put in those pages? Like, how do you decide to keep fan involvement, uh, I don't know, going and having those pages like you can draw. There were also, I remember growing up, there's something about like where is Riverdale really located and mm -hmm. lots of fun really thing, like great things that kind of make it feel like your comic book as opposed to a comic book. Well, I like to do fashion pages still when I when I can, and um, it, we always tell people to send in their fashion ideas. and. Um, so yeah, that's always great to see other people. And, and even if somebody sends in an idea and it's kind of you know maybe a little roughly drawn, you can always you, there's always like a germ of an idea there. You could take it and make it into something. Um, but yeah, those are and those are always. I mean, fashion pages are always so much fun. And um, well, I don't think we we don't do any gag pages and stuff. But no, but, but there is a lot of like what you're saying. Um, uh, a lot of fun for the reader aside from just the, the great stories there's there's the, the editor's notebook and mm -hmm. um, the the Archie fan club when I was a kid was around and that was always great so mm -hmm. I mean there's a there's a long history of, of fan involvement within the books themselves 
And now online, of course, there's oh, that involvement yeah. now. There yeah. There's that Facebook page and stuff. A lot of fan uh, message boards and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, yes. Is Riverdale really located in the wrong side of the <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Victor? Riverdale. <laughs> Riv uh, all I can tell you about Riverdale is it has four seasons. <laughs> it has spring, summer, fall, and winter. There's a beach not too far from mm -hmm. there. There's some tall buildings not too far from there. There are woods and mountains. And there are woods and mountains and lakes and streams. And there are stories, if you look back, where they took buses into New York. So you know New York. So but they had to travel to New York from there. Yeah. We don't know how long. We don't, we don't, know, how, we don't know how long. So the, it could have been, 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 been one hour. It could have been 12 hours. Sometimes they even had to fly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yes, Virginia. <laughs> it's a Riverdale. A Riverdale. But it's not in the Bronx. <laughs> uh, yes. Do you know how there's Josie and Pussy Cat and Katie Keene and um, those extra comics? Which one is your favorite from the extra comics? Of like the other characters? Yeah. Like Sabrina. <coughs> Sabrina's my favorite of all the, of the other non Archie. Well, she's still an Archie character, but of the other universe. Yeah. I like uh, that Wilkin boy, Bingo. Mm. I, I always, the, those stories are always a lot of fun. Well, Josie and the Pussycats, just be prepared. Hmm? Josie, <laughs> one day you're going to see Josie and the Pussycats again. Did you mention Katie Keene? Yeah. Uh, she, she, I, I have a real soft spot in my heart for her, she, and, and she, she should be your role model because she was a, a, a fa she was like the original fashion pinup uh, model in the Archie comics world, and uh, I mean she got, she didn't interact with Archie and Betty and Veronica, but she was published by by Archie, and, and many fashion designers grew up. Uh, uh, sending in ideas mm -hmm. for her dresses because that was like kind of the main reason for Katie Keene is under every panel would say you know Katie's uh, prom dress by uh, uh, Shirley uh, Free Free Freeman uh, of uh, Bronx, New York, and and, and so the, the artist uh, fashion designers like Anna Sui and and all kinds of fashion designers grew up with her and were inspired by her. So I, I love Katie Keene. Yeah, a number of years ago, there was an article in the Times with all of these fashion designers who were influenced by Katie Keene. Mm -hmm. But you were influenced by Betty and Veronica. Mm -hmm. And you'll be seeing more Katie Keene. We're doing an Archie four-part storyline coming up, and Katie Keene is going to be in that storyline. Oh, that's great. Along with everybody in the Archie universe. It's like Josie, it's Sabrina, it's... I got myself into a real pickle in this one, <laughs> so everyone's in this. But it's, um, the Archie, I with Archie 650, it's like a four-part storyline where the Archies go around the world. Well, it's interesting, Josie and Katie Keene and Sabrina really weren't part, weren't, weren't didn't live in Riverdale. Right. When right. they first started, right? right. I mean, they so, weren't part of the Archie world, but now they've been kind of melded in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sabrina always just started in and out, but um, yeah, now now we sort of can mix it all up. That's great. Bring back Super Duck. <laughs> this question is actually from Facebook. Um, they asked, you know, we've done these crossovers like Archie meets uh, Glee, Archie meets Kiss. Will there, wh what other Archie meets would you want to see? I know what I want to see. I want to see Archie and the Big Bang Theory. Just my own personal uh, favorite. Uh, so, trying to good. see if that can that's happen. Yeah. Jughead meets the Ramones. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Any other takers? Any, anybody in the audience? Yes, ma'am? What drew you to Archie? Well, it's just, it just, I don't know, as a kid, it's just so appealing, you know, you, it's just like this perfect little place in the world that you want to be, especially when you're, you know, you're growing up, it looks so idyllic, you know, Archie being chased by Betty and Veronica, and, and then you learn the hard truth <laughs> when you get to be that age, but it's still nice <laughs> to have that, that special, I don't know, that fantasy world, you know. Yeah, and, um, 
it, it's such a simple premise, but it's also so versatile. I mean, we've had Archie, not just as the, the regular high school kid, but he's been a spy and a superhero, and he's been Thor, the god of thunder. And, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, he just lends itself to so much. So there was always um, um, just that great sense of you never know what you were going to get in each issue. So it, it was a lot of fun. It was I always enjoyed the books. What drew you to Archie? <laughs> because of something that my mother allowed me to read because of what I feel like it was it was this violence in there that was and then introduced her to that. Mm. It was my world was Well oh, that's terrific. Yeah. <laughs> so third generation. Yeah. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So this is a, a, a bit different than some of the recent questions, but I'm thinking back to what you were talking about earlier about the covers. And that's since you have the real estate to be able to tell a story, and that's something that's going on inside. Um, as I'm a big fan of print media, but I know we're also moving in other directions now. As people download books and buy books electronically, the cover, the first thing they see is often an inch by an inch, maybe, in the bottom corner of an iPad screen, or something like that. You guys talk at all about what it's like to capture the narrative and the movement that's on the covers we were discussing before in a much smaller area? Is that even a pertinent concern? Well, I think one thing we always we have kind of gone more towards is simpler covers, the covers that require less, you know, like stuff in there, just like less, less words. I mean, something that's more graphic. I think we, we've kind of moved in that area. And it's not too far off from uh, from previous concerns because we always draw much larger than the than the physical comic book, especially when we're drawing covers for the, the digest comic books. Um, so we always have to take into account that reduction and just how things will look when they're smaller. So you can still pack it all in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Shrinkage is a major problem that most people don't talk about, so I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up. Yes, ma'am. Um, earlier you guys were talking about a couple covers that you can not remember who drew that, you know, or you ended up putting artists unknown, and um, kind of got me thinking, is there an archive, or how do you kind of go back and build these books from, from the historic images, and is there a place where you have the information? Well, we have bound volumes of all of our books going back to the early, the first Archie comic book. And, you know, we go through that, and then the newer books are all, we have digital files and uh, copies and just go through covers. Still, we, we, all we, did, we did call on a, lot, a couple of major Archie collectors also to, to help us with, with, with our books, and they generously you know, let us photograph, you know, some of the stuff that maybe had slipped through the cracks. Yeah, the and office. there is a website that we go to and that has all the covers. Is it the comic book database? The comic book database. Yeah, yeah. And, um... But one of the neat things we found it when we were looking through uh, the archives at Archie was, was proofs of, of the covers. You know, so many times when we, we produce things for books, we, we are, you know, looking to collectors or the bound volumes which kind of have a curl or they're, or they're kind of aging in some ways or something but this was great for this book because we found all these printers proofs like Victor was saying they don't make these anymore for contemporary comic books but back in the 50s and 60s the printers did do these beautiful proofs on beautiful paper and and you know they they bound them in a little uh, folder when they presented them to, to, to Victor and the, and the rest of the staff so that they would look nice and and they were filed away in, in file drawers, so they they, they were like, they were like pristine, and the colors are just you know like sparkle, you know like like you, you wouldn't believe, you know. Uh, so we were able to reproduce many of the covers in this book from those uh, printers' proofs, and uh, I was really excited about that because these covers have been, in the book have never I don't think it ever looked better. And then there's the original art. So. That's yeah, we, we also reproduced a lot of original artwork by uh, Fernando and Dan and the, 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 the elder Dan and, and we were even able to find Harry Lucy covers and Bob Montana covers and so we have a lot of original artwork. It's, it's fun when you reproduce black and white original pen and ink artwork in full color so that you can see kind of the, 
the pencil lines and maybe the little whiteouts that the artist used to to make a mistake and or to correct a mistake and uh, you know and the, and the way they pasted up the logo onto the piece of cardboard and so it, you know it's 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 really I I love seeing that original artwork in these books and so we we have a lot of that in the covers in in the cover book for you to enjoy. Yes, ma'am. Um, I know there are a lot of characters other than me and you, so which is the next one in the beginning and which been Which have been added? Oh well, obviously Kevin Keller had been added. Mm -hmm. Who else did we add? We added, uh, uh, I think all of them except for Betty Jughead and Archie. They were the only yeah, three in the first Veronica story. wasn't in the first few stories. And that's right, Veronica yeah. wasn't at the very beginning. She wasn't in. It was Betty and Archie. And, um, Jughead was there. Jughead. I think uh, Archie's was, was dad. Weatherby in, no, no. Wasn't he in the first story? Well, he might have been, but he. Well, we have the first appearances, but that's on the covers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's Once just like, back it's just like you, it's just like <laughs> you, you know, you get through the years, you get new friends and lose some friends because they move away or exactly. something like that. It's, it's just sort of evolved like that, you know? It exactly. was just Betty and Archie, and then the Veronica came along, which uh, yeah, I think the magic really started happening. Yeah. But some of the characters changed, like Moose was not Moose originally. He was oh. something, something else. He called him something else. And Ethel was I, someone else too, wasn't she? Ethel was like... Yeah, she had a, a goofy name. Yeah. yeah. Ophelia. Ophelia, Ophelia well, that was Ar it. Archie was... Uh, the, the first yeah. story makes a, issue, a thing about his, that his nickname... Oh, call me Chick. His, his nickname was Chick, and so he was kind of going by Chick, and so... And Dilton Doyle was something else too. Yeah, so Archie could have been Chick. I think this could have been Chick Comics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Was Veronica this isn't, isn't this your third question? No, it's only my second. Uh -huh. I'm going to shut up after, I promise. No, no, no. We like her. <laughs> was Veronica brought in to be another love interest for Archie or to be a best friend to Betty? And I have one, like, sub-question. That's <laughs> no, not us. Was Cheryl Blossom brought in to be, like, a rival for Veronica in a way? Because that's the way I always saw them. Yes. That <laughs> Um But um, for Wait, uh, the, he is saying simply yes, but yeah, Veronica's a, lo a love interest, and yeah, that's you know, cool. and, and a ri and a rival to Betty. That's what that's what's neat about Betty and that's, Veronica. That was the whole underlying. They're, they're best friends, yet they're rivals. You know, yeah, and that's something neat about the Archie world. You know, they're. They they get into conflicts. They have rivalries. You know they have misunderstandings that make for great stories. But then at at the end they're always best friends and they they support each other and they have each other's back. And I'm gonna cry again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Who do you prefer, Archie with Betty or Archie with Veronica? <laughs> that is the question. Veronica. Veronica. <laughs> she doesn't look happy with her answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I married a Betty. <laughs> Good answer. I'm I'm, Ver I'm a Veronica man. Oh come on. <laughs> You're a numbered victim. But this does not represent the readership. It's, it's usually the other way around. <laughs> Uh, we got another question came in from Facebook just now. Is there an Archie movie in the works, this time with the characters as teens? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's it. That's it? All right. <laughs> now you know. Any uh, final questions before we get to the signings? Preferably questions that could be answered by Victor. Yes. <laughs> All right, I think that about does it. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you to the Strand for hosting us. Uh